What is an Indy? It's a snowmobile, obviously, but is it more than that? Is it more than just a combination of metal, rubber, and plastic designed to traverse snow-covered landscapes? Ask any die-hard snowmobile old-timer and they'll give you that kids these days scowl and simply say, the Indy is more than just a snowmobile, son, and the only way to know what it is is to ride it. Then they'll go back to watching Wheel of Fortune or playing their game of Scrabble. When the Indy name was introduced in 1980, it brought with it a whole bunch of new ideas and innovations that, in many ways, revolutionized the industry. But it's where it came from that's most important. Before the Indy, Polaris was already setting the industry on its heels with sleds like the TX, the TXL, and the TXC models. These sleds were fast and handled well. Ride quality wasn't great, but was better than most for that time period. In 1979, Polaris introduced a new race sled called the RXL that featured an automotive style independent front suspension system that utilized trailing arms and radius rods instead of A-arms or leaf springs. Just like the TXL was nearly unbeatable racing cross country, the RXL was a force to be reckoned with on the oval sprint circuit. In 1980, Polaris decided to mate the high performance of the TXL with the stellar handling characteristics of the RXL. This sled was called the TXL Indy. Indy signifying the independent front suspension. The simple truth of the matter was that it was this sled that opened the eyes of snowmobile designers, engineers, and riders everywhere to how a snowmobile could perform. Not only did the sled handle excellent, but it rode excellent as well. The extensive use of aluminum made the Indy light, and thanks to incredibly low parasitic drag in the chassis and driveline, it was extremely efficient and therefore uncannily fast. This was the first Indy. By all accounts, it was revolutionary in its day, and it set the benchmark by which all other sleds were gonna be measured. From this point on, Polaris worked extremely hard to ensure this exact blueprint was used to design and build all future sleds with the Indy label on the hood. Sleds like the Indy 400 and 500, the Trail Indy, the Indy 600 and 650, the Indy RXL, which many people didn't know was actually a throwback to that original race sled, then on into the 90s with the Indy XLT and Ultra models. Fast forward to the late 90s and early 2000s. Up till this point, Polaris pretty much had the formula for snowmobile performance nailed. The Indy name was synonymous with class-leading suspension, predictable and precise handling, and of course, speed. But beginning with the Edge, the Indy moniker slowly started to disappear from Polaris's lineup. Year after year, there were fewer and fewer Indy models, and the ones that remained were just low-cost or low-performance shadows of what the original Indy was supposed to be. Instead of being Polaris's top-of-the-line, high-performance nameplate, Indy came to represent low-cost, low-performance budget sleds. By the time the Fusion rolled around, the Indy name was all but gone. This really was a dark time for Polaris. The Edge and Pro X models were not being received with as much excitement by consumers as Polaris had originally expected. Skidoo was pushing the limits of snowmobile design and Polaris's attempt to catch up, the Fusion, was an infamous failure. To add insult to injury, Polaris also lost the much coveted title of number one in market share to Skidoo. Now, I'm not saying there's some mystical link between Polaris abandoning the Indy moniker and losing number one market share. Those two things aren't specifically connected. However, the mindset and direction that led to abandoning what was likely the most respected moniker in the industry, Indy, was the same mindset and direction that lost touch with what modern snowmobilers really wanted. After the fusion had been buried, there seemed to be a bit of a change at Polaris. The loss of number one market share seemed to motivate them to once again connect with a new breed of snowmobilers who expected nothing less than excellent ride quality, top performance, stellar handling, and cutting edge innovation. Interestingly, these are actually all the things the Indy name used to represent. Over the course of almost the next decade, Polaris built some impressive snowmobiles. The IQ chassis was amazing, and the Dragon and Dragon SP are still sleds I'd be more than happy to ride today. The shift was proof Polaris really understood the industry and was focused on the future, and the ProRide rear suspension found on the Rush was a not-so-bashful announcement that Polaris wasn't afraid to take risks and think way outside the box. These sleds all had best-in-class handling and ergonomics, 
fantastic ride quality, and while not the fastest at top speed, they all performed excellent on the trail. These sleds encapsulated the true essence of an Indy despite not carrying the Indy name. Not until 2013, that is, when they re-released the Indy with a ProRide front end mated to a solid tunnel and sporting a Liberty 600 under the hood. Did this sled contain all of the necessary DNA to legitimately be called an Indy? Yes, no doubt, and it was very well received by consumers. So much so that the very next season, Polaris introduced an 800 engine and upscale SP package option. While these Indies did definitely carry all the necessary traits to be worthy of the Indy name, they lacked one thing Indies of old did not, showroom appeal. They lacked the wow factor that was standard equipment on a TXL Indy or an Indy 650 or an Indy XLT. Like the last of the Indy breed, these were budget sleds designed to outperform their price tag, but not be sleds people would gawk at at the local trailside pit stop. Despite offering unreal value, this lack of panache led to the Indy name once again disappearing from Polaris's lineup. This time though, its absence would be short-lived. I'm gonna make a bold statement right now. The release of the all new Indy XC, in my opinion, made last season the most important and impressive for Polaris since the introduction of that very first TXL Indy. The Indy XC wasn't a total departure from traditional snowmobile design like the Rush was, in fact, quite the opposite. It was actually a return to traditional snowmobile designs. But what the Indy XC brought to the table that no sled since that first TXL Indy had almost 40 years prior was that it made no compromises. A snowmobile that offered the very best, the absolute pinnacle of what Polaris had to offer. The best ride, the best handling, the best ergonomics, the most impressive performance. This Indy was a showstopper, a sled people would ask you about at a rest stop for sure. This sled is an Indy. It is the sled that all others will now be measured by. It offers exactly the same experience as that original TXL Indy did in 1980, a glimpse into the future of what snowmobiling will look like from here on out. There's no question, the industry looks nothing like it did in 1980. Literally everything has changed, from the sleds to the trails, the gear, riding styles, even the people. But one thing has remained exactly the same. The feeling you get when you fire up your Indy on a cold morning, the smell of two-stroke in the crisp air, that rumble coming from underneath the hood, how the grips feel in your hands, how your feet rest on the running boards, how what the world looks like seems to change when viewed through the windshield. These things aren't unique to any one sled. This is snowmobiling. This is what it feels like. And for the first time in far too long, you can once again experience these feelings from the seat of a sled that truly encapsulates everything it means to be called an Indy. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.